Kids are asking Santa for premium battle passes, Lethal Company completely takes over Steam, and the whole load of Venom stuff cut from Spider-Man 2. I'm Ash Dixon and this is Jinx News. Christmas is fast approaching and that means everyone's busy writing their list of presents that they want to get from Santa this year. The problem is a whole load of children are joining in and it turns out they're rather bad at it. You see, they've done this big old survey over in the US and while we've successfully indoctrinated the vast majority of kids to want video game related gifts, the most popular request is subscriptions. That's right, 39% of children aged 10 to 17 want subscriptions. Now, a further 29% want in-game currency, but perhaps the most depressing statistic of all is that only 22% want actual physical games this Christmas. And yes, I know most people just download their games now, but there's just something magical about unwrapping a brand new video game and knowing you're about to have the best Christmas ever. I still vividly remember the joy of opening Zelda Twilight Princess or the original World of Warcraft box and feasting my eyes on the 10,000 discs inside. Plus, when you saw those bad boys wrapped under the tree, you know what you were gonna get. Well, I say that, we've all been there when this happens. Now, I know you love video games, and I asked the clerk which is the one every boy wants. Oh, you got me. Oh, oh, yeah. And I just worry that it's a little less magical for kids just to get a gift card for a battle pass or some Robux. Don't get me wrong, they will be excited as hell for that Robux and they will kick and scream if they don't get it. But man, those poor little don't know what they're missing out on. But I guess it makes sense why subscriptions and in-game currency top the list. It's not like kids have disposable income to be buying new games all the time. Plus, throughout the year, as a parent, you're way more likely to cave into buying them a $5 Fortnite skin as opposed to a $60 game. And if a kid is already excited about playing a game and that game constantly throws shiny new things in their face, that's obviously going to be what they want. Now, there are the sad, wider implications of what this means for the industry. We have a whole generation of gamers coming up where battle passes and microtransactions are totally normalized. And that means more subscriptions and more live service games being shoved down our throat. I guess the one silver lining is that consoles are still very high on the list. So whether you're a kid from the 90s or a kid today, we'll all have magical memories like this. <laughs> The Game Awards are just around the corner and it looks like some new categories may be thrown into the mix. Producer Jeff Keighley recently did a Twitch Q&A where he was asked about it. And while this year's collection awards will remain the same, apparently there's two new categories that keep getting discussed. Best Supporting Actor and Best Remake. Now, to me, Best Supporting Actor makes the most sense. Games are only getting larger, more talented casts, and I think it's only fair that their work is recognized. Plus, let's be honest, it's often those side characters that we love the most. I mean, in Borderlands alone, we have Claptrap, Mad Moxie, Mr. Torg, Face McShooty, and, well, Steve. Of course you won with those cards. Even Steve could've won with those cards. And all he can say is, hey -o. Hey -o. Shut the f up, Steve! Meanwhile, Best Remake is the more questionable one. I don't quite know if we get enough remakes every year for a category, but that will likely change with how things are trending, especially if you include remasters in there too, although I also don't know if that's something we should be encouraging. One category that already exists, however, but is creating quite the stir, is this year's Best Indie Game. That's because Day of the Diver has been nominated, and while it has all the hallmark features of an indie game, it is owned by a $1.8 billion company called Nexon. Well, Jeff Keighley has spoken on that too. He said, independent can mean different things to different people, and it's sort of a broad term. You can argue, does independent mean the budget of the game? Does independent mean where the source of the financing was? Does it mean the team size? Is it the kind of independent spirit of the game, meaning a smaller game that's sort of different? He went on to say, I think everyone has their own opinion about this, and we really defer to our jury of 120 global media outlets who vote on these awards to make that determination of is something independent or not. And to be honest, it's kind of an impossible situation because yeah, you can try and define the category in a way that games like Dave the Diver aren't eligible, but that will inevitably lead to other games being excluded, which people will then kick up a fuss about. However, I wouldn't want it to be so loose that it follows in the footsteps of the music industry. There, the word indie just means a straight genre and no longer has anything to do with its independent roots. I'm keen to know what you think though. Should Dave the Diver be nominated for best indie? It was made by a small team. Is that enough? Let us know in the comments down below.
It was only six weeks ago that Lethal Company exploded onto the scene. We've touched on it before, but it's essentially a co-op horror game where you try and complete tasks with your crew. The problem is, there's a whole load of scary monsters trying to kill you, and you're working for a greedy corporation who couldn't care less. And let's be honest, it's no surprise any game that lets you enjoy your friends screaming like big babies is guaranteed to be a smash hit. There's something in that room, by the way, across the way. There's something, oh, yeah, so it's something at the doorway. <laughs> And it's because of moments like that that Lethal Company is now the highest rated Steam game of the year, which is pretty impressive when you consider the competition. You know, Borders Gate 3 and the Resident Evil 4 remake. In fact, it has nearly 80,000 reviews on Steam, 98% of which are positive. And what's crazy is that 50,000 of those are just from the last week. It's always interesting seeing these games pop out of nowhere. It's a similar story to Battlebit and Phasmophobia, although this time it was created by a single developer called Zekas. They're absolutely rolling in it right now, but you know, it's obviously well deserved, especially as they've helped make moments like this. <laughs> whoa, 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 what? <laughs> Spider-Man 2 voice actor Tony Todd has reportedly said that an astonishing 90% of the dialogue he recorded for Venom wasn't included in the final game. Todd made the claim over the weekend at a fan expo in San Francisco where he sat alongside Miles Morales' voice actor Najee Jetta to break down all things Spider-Man 2. Todd revealed the fact that most of the work he did as Venom was cut from the final game, including some juicy goss about how the Venom suit was initially going to inhabit Miles at one point. Now, if these claims are accurate, it's unclear whether the studio ended up scrapping a large amount of content that might once have been included in the game. An alternate theory is that this is extra dialogue with a view to using it as potential DLC or a spin-off title. There have been rumours swirling about where the Spider-Man games go from here, now that we know that Mars Morales will be the lead protagonist for the next one, but there are still some unanswered questions from the main game itself. Either way, we'll have to wait a while until we find out what's coming next, but hopefully not all of Todd's excellent work as Venom will go to waste. And that is the show! Like, comment and subscribe, the holy trinity of our lord almighty YouTube. Make sure you do all three because it does go a very long way. We've got loads of other videos too, so why not check those out? We also do Let's Plays and Gaming Docs on our other channels, so you can find those in the description below. We'll be back tomorrow, don't miss it.